The year was 1781. Six long years have passed since the War for Independence began. Many early battles of the Revolution have been fought in New England and Mid-Atlantic colonies. There were victories and defeats on both sides. But in 1777, the American victory at Saratoga forced Great Britain to change its strategy. Instead of attacking American forces where they were the strongest, the British turned south. They believed victory in the south would be easier, since many southern colonists were still loyal to the king. The British captured important cities along the southern coast, including the ports of Savannah, Georgia and Charleston, South Carolina. But victory was not as easy as expected. Southern patriots fought back, and the war dragged on. Then in 1781, the commander of the Continental Army, General George Washington, saw an opportunity to strike a deadly blow to the British. His target? British Lieutenant General Charles Cornwallis. Cornwallis and his army of 8,000 British troops were camped at Yorktown, Virginia. Cornwallis chose Yorktown for his location on the Chesapeake Bay. There, British ships could easily drop off food, ammunition, and fresh reinforcements for Cornwallis' army. Washington and French commander Comte de Rochambeau joined forces to execute a two-pronged attack. From New York, 7,000 French and American soldiers would march nearly 700 miles to Yorktown. At the same time, a fleet of 29 French warships would sail north to blockade the Chesapeake Bay and attack Cornwallis by sea. Luckily, the plan worked. The Continental Army and the French fleet both arrived in Yorktown in September. Washington and Rochambeau's soldiers surrounded Yorktown by land, while the French fleet blocked their escape by sea. British General Cornwallis was in a tight spot. He was trapped in Yorktown with no way out and no way to get fresh supplies. It was only a matter of time before the British ran out of food and ammunition. Outside the city walls, Washington and Rochambeau began the siege of Yorktown. For six days, they fired on the British defenses. Then, Washington struck. His men charged British lines, broke their defenses, and captured the last British fortifications outside the city. With the Continental Army at the gates, General Cornwallis had no hope for a victory. On October 19, 1781, Cornwallis and his 8,000 British troops laid down their arms. Together, their French and American forces had defeated a large part of the British Army. The surrender at Yorktown was a terrible blow to Great Britain. It forced King George III and Parliament to finally discuss peace. On September 3, 1783, British and American representatives signed the Treaty of Paris. The war was officially over. The Americans had won their independence.